thank you all for being here as usual. We really appreciate the coverage, and uh, it just it means a lot in terms of growing our sport. But um, you know, I didn't think it was a really a very clean game. I didn't think it had incredible rhythm to it. Um, but I really did like the energy we played with. Um, I of course. Uh, I liked the teamwork plays, not only the 24 assists and obviously the tied for the school record, Jordan Canada 16 assists, but I liked the assist screens. I liked the way that we tried to find Monique Billings in the paint. And so I liked our energy and I liked our teamwork. Um, I, you know, we're going to have to clean up the rebounding and some other things. But um, overall, I liked the energy in which we came to play. We earned 40 more minutes and that's what we said. We had to earn 40 more minutes. And we're going to have questions just for the student athletes so we can dismiss them. Uh, Jordan, uh, congratulations on a fine game. Um, was, it, was there some kind of a plan of attack to just go out there and hit them in the mouth as hard as you could? And 15 to nothing, that's, that's pretty impressive. I mean, that's what you want to do every game. It's not just in the NCAA tournament, it's whoever you're playing against. And so we realize that it's one and done, so you have to come out like that every single time. Um, so I thought we did a great job of doing that. Jordan, 16 assists, but that means a lot of girls have to knock down shots. Were you surprised at all uh, how, many, how many balls are going, and especially with threes tonight? No, of course not. Like, I, I believe in my teammates. Um, even when they do miss, I always say keep shooting. It was a great shot. The defense do miss it. Um, and that's my job as a leader. I mean, I'm not going to go out there and doubt my teammates if they can't make a shot. Um, my shooters, you know, they're great shooters. So that's what I tell them every single time, no matter if it goes in or out. I tell my post players, keep just keep going inside, um, and that's what I that's what I did tonight. But I'm not surprised at all. Jordan, uh, uh, we spoke the other day, and you, you assured me, and I'm sure you assured others that you you team would not overlook for uh, uh, 13 seed in the Boise State. Um, how impressed are you by the way you guys came out and just pretty much dominated this game from start to finish? Yeah, you can't overlook anyone in March at all. So um, that's what we've been talking about all week, just one game at a time, not getting too far ahead of ourselves. We said that we had to win this game first before we could do anything else and play another 40 minutes, like Coach Corey said. So I'm really proud of my team for having that focus and um, coming out as the aggressor. Yeah, um, for as far as the balance, we um, as a team spoke about like it can't just be me and Jordan. So the role players, key players need to step up. And I think that that's what they did today. It's been an emphasis in our practices all week. And um, second question, defense. Yeah. Um, yeah, that's also been an emphasis. Um, uh, transition defense. Uh, what are the other two? Yeah, you were the right. The, the, well, it was communication. All of the keys were on defense. Yes, every, all of our <laughs> keys for the scouting report was on defense. So it was a big focus for us just to be the aggressor and to not let them have anything easy tonight. This question is for both of you, know, ladies. I know it's the first game and they play on Monday, but tonight, once the game is over and you think about it, what do you think of the things that you need to really work on for Monday? Um, defensive rebounding. I mean, we lost the boards by two. Well, we allowed 22 old boards. Mm -hmm. And they had 22 old boards. So that's something that we really got to focus on. Um, and when we focus on that, we're, we're really great in transition. We can get out, we can push. Um, and I thought we did a good job of that in the, in the first quarter. Um, and then the second half, they just have more fight. And then that's what we need to fix. I agree with Jordan. That and just um, the consistency with that. Just playing every quarter like it was our first quarter. Just strong and really consistent. Any other questions for Samantha? <clears throat> Uh, Jordan, obviously this is contingent on Texas A&M winning this next game, but what are your thoughts on a uh, potential matchup with Curtis Knox, that point guard, the other point guard matchup in that game? Uh, I've only seen her play like a couple times, and she's very aggressive, and she also likes to, you know, uh, get her teammates involved. So, I, I, I mean, I'm looking forward to it. I know she's a really great player, and it's going to be a great matchup for us and, and also for our, just our whole team in general. So um, hopefully, you know, 
if they if they win, then we'll focus on that. But until then, we gotta wait and see what uh, this game uh, what this game is like. So. Will you guys stick around and watch this next game? Mm -hmm. yes. the team. Yeah. And when when you're watching these games, like, how much do you take in from what goes on out there versus what you see on film? Um, obviously, it's very different when you're seeing it in person and live. Um, so just trying to figure out, you know, who are the key players, what do they like to do, um, and that, that's pretty much what we try to focus on. I think it's like an intimidation factor too, them knowing that we're watching because they were watching our game before we played, and I saw them, so it'll be just the same. <laughs> Well, I think Jordan Canada getting into the seams, if they're going to, you know, pick us up, I thought they mixed up their zone and player to player. Um, but it's really hard to keep Jordan from going north and south. But once she's able to get into the key and, you know, Monique establishing herself early, now you, you're really playing north and south. So they got to make some choices. If they're going to come in and make adjustments on Monique or Jordan, it's going to leave open our shooters. So, um, you know, I think it's, it's Jordan's ability to get into the lane and that starts our offense and everything else we do. But our ability to tack into the, we call it the war zone, um, which is that sort of eight foot area right around the goal. And when we establish the war zone early, it sets up everything else later. Hey Coach Post, um, obviously it was kind of a, a, a physical game, a mismatch, but uh, you guys seem like you are especially energized right now. Do you, is it just true for you guys right now where they will say that the NCAA tournament's a whole different it is, you know, and I think, you know, I, I think I said after the Pac-12 tournament loss that I was really confident that it was going to change us and for the better. And because I trust this team's heart so much, they, um, they care deeply, they work really hard, they're not afraid to be challenged. These two in particular, I got right in Monique Billings' face on a couple of occasions and I, it's because I don't want her to ever have a possession where she settles for mediocrity when she has greatness in her all the time. When Jordan Canada had three possessions where they had a switch and Jordan let number two post her up and I'm like, she's like, well, you know, I said, that's not okay. Since when do you let that happen? And I love that I have two players that um, want to be great enough that they allow you to push them there all the time. And a lot of pe a lot of players were like, coach, what do you want? I mean, we're up by 20, you know, but they're not like that. And so um, I think that it doesn't surprise me that we're at a different emotional level going to the NCAA tournament. They know what's at stake. They know what they've been training for and they don't want to be, um, they want to be held, held accountable for every single inch. Hey, Coach Close. Um, you know, going into the game, obviously, you guys, as you said, it, it's a whole new ball game. So what would you say is the mindset that you guys went into with this game and the mindset that you had your team stay in in order to not get ahead of yourselves before the week? Well, I think that we are a very process-oriented program. We believe that the outcome will take care of itself if we fall in love with, I told the team two things I wanted them to focus on. Um, one was falling in love with the process of preparation, that you got to love preparing, that that is going to be what leads to greatness. And the second thing, you got to fall in love with making a, t a play for someone else, making a play for somebody else, whether that's a assist screen that creates a shot for somebody else. The last three that Nicole Cornette got was off of a great screen by Dominique Williams, and that's just as valuable. So you got to fall in love with preparing, and you got to fall in love with making a, a play for a teammate. And I think the reality for us is that that's what we've been trying to do the whole year. So we're not changing now that the NCAA tournament happens. And it's not based on do we shoot the ball well, do we not shoot the ball well. It's that we're going to give everything we have in our preparation, and then we're going to play selfless basketball and let the chips fall where they may.